I want to start with Elon Musk's announcement. It was a post, not surprisingly, on X, the former Twitter, which he owns. He said, the first human received an implant from Neuralink yesterday and is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. Professor Illis, what did you make of that announcement? Yeah, I really appreciate that question, Ian. You know, there are a number of ethical issues around that announcement. I think the most important one is the lack of transparency about around any details of the procedure, uh, who the patient was, what condition the person has. Um, and that's very concerning. And, and there's really no amount of wealth or ambition that should exempt a company or an individual from being uh, transparent scientifically um, and uh, uh, re really revealed the methods that are important for the community of scientists and others uh, around around them to be able to evaluate the procedure and the pur purported success. Dr. Krakauer, as a neurologist, you know the importance of the scientific method of uh, of you know having the data out there for people to assess. When you saw that post, what was your reaction? Well, I I, I think it was just too little information to really have a reaction other than um, get the impression that the engineering has advanced. Um, Brain-machine interface is a mixture of medicine, science, ethics, and engineering. Um, here, it feels to me that the engineering was being emphasized at the expense of everything else. This technology generally, um, so not specific to Elon Musk, but, but as a neurologist, um, I assume that this area of technology holds great promise. To the degree that there is a history of using devices uh, for physiological purposes to help patients, um, yes. In other words, there are patients, uh, ALS, locked in, cervical spinal cord injury, that could greatly benefit from this kind of approach. And there is evidence going back 20 years that they can benefit. Uh, this is just more advanced engineering along that line of investigation. One of the things about Elon Musk is he sure knows how to promote things. And I want to play a clip from him about where he says he sees this technology going. We're already a cyborg to some degree, right? Because you've got your phone, you've got your laptop. It's just that the data rate to the electronics is slow. If you can solve the, the data rate, then you can improve the symbiosis that is already occurring between man and machine. Professor Illis, it sounds like big concepts there. Is, was that a meaningful statement uh, as you heard it? Oh, I think uh, speed of data processing is, a, is very important for all the advancing uh, technologies that involve the brain, whether we're connecting onto the scalp in a non-invasive way or into the brain for more invasive purposes. Uh, the better resolution and the better speed we have, uh, indeed, the better benefits will be to the people uh, receiving these interventions. But we also always have to remember that uh, all neurologic patients are not the same. So as Dr. Krakow will know better than me, a person with spinal cord injury has a very different life trajectory than a person with ALS. And these conditions need to be uh, addressed uh, neurotechnology, neurotechnologically in uh, very specific and specialized ways. Uh, Dr. Krakauer, why don't you jump in? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think the engineering in service to the treatment of specific patients, like the ones I mentioned, it's very exciting and creditable. But what I worry about is that the medicine and the patient are really secondary to a kind of hype about telepathy and symbiosis between man and machine. It, it's clear to me that Elon Musk is much more interested in sort of the sci-fi connotations of this technology than its concrete medical application. I want to play another piece of tape, and uh, this is from the, the website for Neuralink. By participating in the PRIME study, you'd be helping to redefine the boundaries of human capability. If you've been living with quadriplegia from a spinal cord injury or with ALS, you may qualify for the PRIME study.
So, Professor Illis, uh, in that, uh, that bit on the website, they're looking for people to sign up to be part of, of the human trials. What advice would you give people who are desperately seeking change in their life because of spinal cord injury or illness, uh, are, are you know, short of hope, and might be thinking about signing up for, for, the, for the Neuralink trials? What would you say? Well, I would assert extreme caution at, at this point. Again, lack of transparency equates to lack of scientific rigor at this point. And there are many, many centers around the world uh, who are advancing neuroscience and neurotechnology for spinal cord injury, ALS, Alzheimer's disease, the whole range of conditions that affect the brain and also mental illnesses um, that are working really in a way that's very systematic and that is well accepted and meets the gold standards of process and science in the scientific community. So I, I would urge people rather to turn to our academic medical centers uh, than to companies that might have uh, profit uh, more or at least as much uh, in their site as uh, those of us working uh, in, in a, a more academic uh, sector and really have uh, patients and their vulnerabilities at the forefront of our thinking. Professor Judy Illis here in Vancouver and Dr. John Krakauer in Lisbon, Portugal. Thanks to both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.